Well, welcome everyone to our weekly session of Direct Funos. As is our custom, we first orient ourselves to see where we are in the general scheme of the book, and then we'll get to the class. The Ramchal first explained that there's a give and take, a debating process going on in the Gemara. An evaluation of statements consisting of questions and answers and kashas and tributes and then proofs and disproofs. And we went through the various subcategories of that uh, Masamatan. He says, however, that really if you investigate things deeply, you'll find that all the Masamatan can be broken down into a few pulosa seiko, a few logical moves that the mind already has built in to evaluate and understand statements. What are those three moves? The first thing is that one has to evaluate what's being said in the form of a statement. What statement is being presented? That's called Havana Samamari. After we understand statements and its parts, we'll build with statements syllogisms. And finally, we'll be proving and disproving syllogism and propositions. So basically, we're going to narrow things down to propositions or statements and their syllogisms and proofs. Today, Mezus Hashem will finish the first section of Pools Haseiko, and that's Havana Samamari. That's where we're holding today. In this little section over here, Havana Samamari. Now, we've discussed in Havana Samamari that there's different types of statements, the minimum are, and we said that statements first of all, can be broken down into statements that are understood in a simple meaning, pashtas, and then there's statements that are used in using uh, analogies or exaggerations. So we want to understand, basically, that every statement, no matter what form it's in, is going to have a subject, something that it's speaking about, and it's going to have something that it's saying about that subject. We call that a no say and a no su. <clears throat> and we discussed that subjects come in three different sizes, <clears throat> generals, all statements, particular statements, like Yerushalayim is not Matama, Benigoyim. And then there's Katsasi, some statements. We said predicates come in 11 sizes. <clears throat> the simple statement, the limited statement, and so on and so on, the exceptional statement. After we understood the forms of subjects and predicates, we went on to show what is the statement saying and what must be true if the statement is true. That was called the Amitis Hamamarin, what are the Sotkazera, the, the final bottom line of the statement that will be needed either to prove the statement true or prove the statement false. <clears throat> then we went on to evaluating the similarities and differences between two statements. We took two statements and the Ramchal went through evaluating their relationship, either their different words and saying the same thing that all domin, or they share the same common subjects or predicates, or their opposites or their the dullum have really nothing to do with each other at all. Contrapositives also. So that was a discussion of statements and relationships to each other. Now we're going to go and discuss the last section in statements and that's called Diukins or inferences. Ramchal is going to tell us that certain inferences are they're not 
absolutely true, and certain in, uh, view PIM will be absolutely true because they're built on the internal aspect of the statement. And you'll be giving a list of those Mufrach Diyukim, and that's what we'll be doing for our work today. So let's get to the text of Derek Tafunos. I'll we'll turn it on for you. There we go. And we'll shut off these little markers. <clears throat> Very good. Chapter 5. Hine ad heina de barnu mima shimitstar besuflenum in a mamarim shinikra onishma. Up to this point, we've explained what we can understand from a statement that is either written or spoken uh, or, or someone said it. Omnam O Nik. We also have a logical process in our mind which can go from the black and white statement of what it says to what it infers, which is things that it doesn't say in black and white, but must be there through implication. Because this inference is absolutely understood with the black and white statement that is sta sta stated. For instance, Terek Moshal. Kashamu'a Torah, zos hachaya asher tachelu. The Torah says, these are the animals that you may eat. Hine hamamra hazena vim tachila kafi havanas milasav elu, she'elu haminim hamuskarim bapasha muta lanu lecholosam. The first thing is what the Pasha says, and that's what we understand it first, in the basic meaning of the words that all the different types that are going to of animals mentioned in this Pasha are going to be permitted to eat. These are the ones that will be permitted to eat. Omnam, however, but we can understand that it's impossible that for the first statement to exist, we have understanding in the next piece that all the other mini, all the other different types of animals that are outside the list in this partial, they will not be permitted to eat. So even though it's not stated in black and white, the very fact that the word zopes are higher, these are the ones that are permitted makes us infer that any ones outside that list will not be permitted. When we said, we said in Shmuel, these were the last words of David HaMelech. Nisbonen, the Gemara in Moed Katten, says, Miklau V'ik Rishonim, since it used the word, the last words, so there must have been previous words, first words. It's impossible to understand the word acharon after blast without understanding there must be ones before it. So those are inferences, linguistic influences, <coughs> that makes us understand statements that are not physically in black and white, but are there perforce according to the words used. Lulam Komash Ama Mevinim Tok Mamaycha below Parish Bo Nikra Diuk. The Ramchal tells us that everything that we can understand for statement from a statement that it's not written there in black and white and flourish, that's called a diuk. The Yata Niba Emishpatava now I'll explain the various rules. Hine Kol Mamashioma Roish Yishmuru Kol Milosav. It's a rule of proper speech that when you make a statement, you should be very careful in your words to give the proper extent and distribution that's fitting to those words. What does that mean? Perish. Shiloh yuchad no su no seyachad. In who we 
you shouldn't make a statement that says that there's one predicate exists in one subject when really that predicate exists in three subjects. Alternatively, it's not fitting to say a statement that one predicate is applicable to three subjects when in reality that predicate is only applicable to one of the three. So the first rule of dictoglossion here is that we have to be very, very precise with our statement and make sure that when we're predicating something to a subject, it's exactly the amount of subjects that it fits, no less and no more. Also, we shouldn't say that one subject has a specific predicate when really that subject has three predicates and not one. And similarly, we shouldn't say that a certain subject has three predicates when really it only has one. So mitzad the no say, mitzad the subject and the predicate, everything we say should be totally exacting. And that's the reason why we can make inferences, because we said the people that we're at least dealing with, the, the Talmud Echachamim, are very, very careful with their language. The hine al pi based on this principle of exactitude, when we hear a statement, you should look at the, this, the parts, subjects and predicates and the kesher. The el shirab, but you have to look also at the amount that's being spoken about in the subject of the predicate. And according to what we find there in the statement, the size of the subject, the size of the predicate, and the relationship of the parts, that will be the tziur, the, the image, that we receive from them. We, we've spoken about the, the, the thought word, thought formula. A person has a concept, he closes it in words, and those words should be very fitting for me, or the listener, to reconstruct exactly the meaning of those words. Any sloppiness or in precise use of language is going to cause a resultant confusion in the ears of the listener. The hu and anything that's outside the limitations of the words used in the statement, rightfully ye don't yos We should say it does not exist. In other words, the statement out if the statement is about one subject, then all of the subjects are out. If it's talking about one predicate with the subject and all the predicates are out. Berach Mashal. Rebbe Yehud Omer, Hatsad Sipor L'Migdal, Utsvi L'Bayez Chayev. A person on Shabbos, if he traps a bird in a tower or a deer in a house, he's Chayev. The Dikul B'Shas. So the Shas makes a deal. L'Bayez, Hum D'Machayev. Aval L'Bivarin, Lo. The Shas makes a deal that says, in a house you'd be chayev, but something larger than a house, a corral, for instance, then you should be putter. Yiso had diuku, what's the foundation of, of, of a diuk, of this diuk? Ki hine yacheg rabbi Yehuda hachiyot el hanose hamukal shel tzad bias. The foundation of this inference is based on the fact that Rabbi Yehuda limited his subject to trapping in a house. And it's fitting that we judge from his words. Excuse me. 
it's fitting to say anything that's outside of that subject that he limited, lo then it should not have that predicate of being chayev, perish. A person who does not capture a house, even though he captures an animal in a larger place, lo yechayev, he should not be chayev. Because if the heel was not limited, it was really unlimited, then then Rabbi Yehuda would not have limited his subject with the limitation of bias, the Haino Atzad, the bias. So to in all similar cases. So we, and this is the foundation, uh, it's brought in Dr. Gamar as one of his first rules, is Diktu Kalashim. That people, when they speak Tamarei Chachamim, are a very, very precise in the language they use. And therefore, whatever limitations they placed on the subject or the predicate will indicate to us that things outside those borders will have a different law. That's the introduction and that's the very basic reason why we can infer things because Tamdekhamu speak Dafka. However, we have to explain. You should know that there's two types of Yukim. The first type is called Mukhrach. They're absolutely necessary. And the second type is called Milti Mukhrach. Unnecessary. What we call Labdaf. We'll see. What are the Milti Mukhrach? Who Talui the Diktuk say there Milos Hasan? The Milti Mukhrach ones depend upon the way that the words are organized or a certain uh, relationship that the words have. Okay, for instance, we said that the the use of the word achron is a, is a mila yachasi. Achron implies rishon. We've been studying, for our example, the arba avos nziken. The word avos, a av, an abba, implies a tolda. So those are all linguistic inferences. They depend upon the specific words being used. Or also the Seder of how the words are used. We said that there's the Shorbo, Mab, and Heber. And there's a, all sorts of Diyukim, exactly what that, why that Seder was picked. Is it because that's the way they were presented in the Chomesh, or is it because of the way that the words sound together, the, the shore and the board, the mountain, the habit. But a lot of people in the diag about the Seder in which the information was presented. So all those du du uh, du du uh, building building even though they flag or they indicate uh, at first, that we should make these diukim. We can possibly find a reason to agree with the statement and disagree with the inference. Let's give an example. Derech Mashal. We learned in a, in, in a Mishnah about saying the bracha on Abdullah. If you're looking over a city and you see most of the Jew in the city and you see the candles lit after Shabbos, so the statement says in brachas, in Rogue Israel, if the city has a majority of Jewish people in it, those are the lights you're seeing from the majority of Jewish homes, so then the Borech. So then, the law is that you're allowed to mavarach. The Gemara makes diuk. 
poor marks are marks. And what happens, it was a, a city with 50% Jews and a 50% non-Jews. So that ain't no better. It's a proper deal. The, the fact that the, the statement says rove means dafka rove. It has to be 51% Jews in order to mavara. 50% Jews already falls out of that limited subject of rove. That's what the words imply. However, later on, the Gemara says, "Vidin who the few maxal maxal nami Really, the truth is that even if there were fifty percent Jews and fifty percent non-Jews, you still could say the bracha for Abdullah. So then, why did the statement use the word rov? Behind me, the Tana Rasha rov kusin Tana Sefer. Rov Yisrael. Since the Mishnah in the Rasha used the, the spoke about a din where the the truth was Rove, it only applied to Rove uh, Kusim. So there it continued in the Sefer to say Rov Yisrael, even though it wasn't true. So this is a, a stylistic these. Uh, reason why the Tana did not speak precisely. Again, the first rule is we always presume preciseness. However, we can dochek that diuk, since it wasn't said, it was implied, by showing another reason why the diuk is not true. The statement is true, but not the diuk. Here in the case of the Rish, we spoke about a din of Kusim, where Rome is applicable, so the Tana, in order for us to memorize the Mishnahis properly, continued talking about Rode Israel, even though it was not really shy to Rode, Maksa Maksa also. Hine, Nitcha Hadiuk, Bamasha Omer, Shalom Nishavana Tana Lahotzi Maksa Maksa. The deal was pushed away by saying that Tana did not mean to eliminate the possibility of half half. Ela, Ram, Sheikh, Machin, Hoshin, Arashim. But just to follow the language of the ratio. So that, that's why these diukim in the language can be pushed around, because we can find other reasons why we can agree with the original statement. Of course, that's we have to always agree with the Mafora statement. But the unstated statement can be pushed around for certain external reasons. Now, again, we don't like to do that. Our first position, our preferred position, and where we always start is that the statement is true and the deep is true, but we may be forced to keep the statement and eliminate the deal. For instance, the Gemara also later on in Baba Kama gives uh, 11 or 16, a lot of different types of abos, and some of them, like Motsi Shemra, don't have toldos. So where's your Gemara S? Avos implies Tovos. It gives a new definition of Avos. No, Avos has another definition called things that are mentioned in the Torah called Av, even if they don't have Tovos, which is another way of denying the, 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 the inference. Okay, so those are called inferences based on the use of language, the Seder of language, implications of language. Those implications can be pushed away. What are called muhlach inferences? Who told you that etzimama? Now we're not talking about the statement of relationship to other statements in Atu Rasha and Nakasefa. We're talking about the statement itself. There's certain diyuka in a statement, she'i ef shash in nodama mama vanachisha diyuka hu. It's impossible to agree with the statement and deny its inference. Why? Kiba emes en nifrabimeno. Because the inference is an integral part of the logical structure of the statement. Here's an example. Let's say we, we know the statement. Everything that is clean on its mother's back will cause ink to rise. So we're talking about wool on 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 its on the sheep. And we want to we're saying that clean wool will always absorb ink. That's what the statement says. 
all clean wolves, call them, call Manda Habinaki Agatime, all clean wolves that were on the, the, the mother sheep, that was sheared from the mother sheep, as long as it's clean there. So ink will absorb sully, it will go into that wool nicely. Mukrach, Shine the Gamkan should call the low salic everything that does not absorb lo hami nakia was not clean on the mother's back of the sheep. He's now going to explain a whole set of the Mukhach in the Yukim. He's going to go through the all statement and some statement that's and he's going to show us all the Mukhach to you can let's see how he does it. Right, so this example that we just finished, he's showing from here that there's no way to come along and say that, that there's a reason for this deity not to be a deity. In other words, he's saying that, that because it's, because it's not that, based on right, sorry, it's not based on stylistic language, it's based on the relationship to the this subject internally has with its predicate. Uh -huh. Then with style here. If the first statement is true, the statement, second statement must be true because it's built on form. So let, let's go through the form a little and let's see why that's true. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Amnam called the Yukim Amukrachim Hem Eil. All the Mukrach the Yukim are the following. So the first statement he's going to give is the Klali statement, the general statement. Call Mama Klali, Mekayim, a Klali Mekayim, that means the Gezerah is and is. All things are, as opposed to all things are not. So all Klali Mekayim statements, okay, Yidiyuku Mimeno Shnei We are going to make two inferences from them. Here's our example. Derek Michelle. This is my little charm. At the bottom we'll get to it. Our first statement said every all clean walls will absorb ink. You do So we'll make the following to you Kim. Call the low salic anything that cannot absorb. Lo Havi Nakia Gavi Me could not be clean on the back of its mother's milk. The nikraze chiluk as we call it, and it's called the chiluk because we changed the subject and the predicate. It's the hefti because we changed the gazera from, from um, positive agav salik to negative to love salik. And we kept it a kolel. So let's see if that's true on our, our charts. I made a little bit of a little chart here. Here's the, the, the circle. Here's the circle here that, that talks about all the clean wolves on the mother's back. Okay? That's the blue circle. Now we're saying everything, everything in this circle here. Okay, everything in the circle exists within this circle. Okay, call the Nakia Gavi May. Everything that's Nakia Gavi May must be absorbent. Must the ink must absorb? Now, what happens if I have things that are non-absorbent that are outside this box? Okay. So anything outside this box, which is the box of low cell, like anything that doesn't uh, absorb, can't possibly be Naki Agapi May. Okay? Is that clear? Let's say I say all buses have wheels. Just to give a very simple example. All buses have wheels. So the it's a uh, Colwell subject, all buses, and they're found in the category of wheels. So anything that doesn't have wheels outside the category can't possibly be a bus. So that's the first thing. Right. The Yudhiyaku Venu 
and there's another diuk, she'echad min ha'orim yafe hu naki agav yimei. Now, there has to be at least one, one thing here that is naki agav yimei, that's salik. There must be, since you're really saying the whole category exists within Selleck, so you're going to have to find at least one of the uh, Ah, you see, I'm sorry. Vidokmi menoshe echad mena olim yafe. Switch the term here, you see, to olim yafe. Naki agavi me. One of these, you see in the salic category, you see he changed the word salic, that just confused me. But one of the, one of the things that are salic, one of them has to be in this category. Are you with me? The, the, it's an important deal. Here, it could be really that, that all of them that are salic were all clean or copy made. That's a possibility. We never know that. In any, in any statement that's a cold statement, I never know the relationship of the predicate to the subject in its entirety. For instance, as I say, all buses have wheels, right? I don't know if all wheeled buses, uh, all wheeled things are buses. Maybe right. only some wheeled things are buses. That's the only thing that's muhrach. So I know that there has to be at least one thing that has wheels that's a bus. That's the minimum I could say. There has to be at least one. So cold nakyagabi may, everything that's clean is absorbent. So I have to know at least one of the of the absorbent things is 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 uh, is something that's nakyagabi may. There may be lots of other things also that are solid. Okay? But there has to be at least one. Okay, that's the minimum. So those are the two that you can that you make from a categorical affirmative statement. If I say all buses have wheels, so that anything that's not a bus doesn't have wheels, I eliminate this box. And there has to be something that has wheels is a bus. There has to be something in this category over here. Because as I said, all buses have wheels, but it doesn't have to be all of them. It could just be just one. Okay, that's called the two diukian, the two inferences that are mukhrak from any full positive statement, categorical affirm categorical affirmative statement. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I the next type of statement. Okay, no problem. The next the next type of statement is the categorical categorical denial statement. Okay. Here we say the Klali Sholel. We take a, a category and we say it's Sholel, it's negative, because there is negative. From here we can only have one deal. For instance, Ein Davara Yorid Melamala. Here's the group of all the Vorim Rayim you would think of in the world. Well, you'll never find one of these, anything in this category of Davara, you will never find it in the category of the thing that's, oops, the thing that's Yorid Melamala. They're mutually ex exclusive. So since that's true, since no A is B, so it has to be true True that A yod milamala davara. It has to be true that you'll never find anything yod milamala that's a davara. So the converse of that statement, you see, when we switch the, well, we want to know this is the subject, davara. We want to know if it's relationship to the predicate. That's what the first statement tells us. But the interesting, the diuk, which must be true, tells us something about the predicate's relationship to the subject. So here, since since all A is not P, then all B cannot be A either. So that's Klali Sholel. We're saying a whole category is not found in another place, in another category, and therefore the converse of that is also true. That's the second type of statement. Now we're going to come to a very interesting set of diukim, and they come from the sum statement. And he says like this, and by the way, this is based on his original supposition that sum is dafka, and we have to discuss a little 
what's the mashmus of some? Some, the way he's going to learn it means not all. Okay? Let's go. But call mama kasasi mukhaim. We have a sum is. There you do yak mimeno shloshi diyukim. Here we're going to do three mukhach diyukim. Let's take our example. Yesh zoriz miniska. Here's the category. Here's the category over here of zorizim. That's our subject. Now we're saying only part of this category of zorizim will be found in Niskarim. Okay? Those people who do things with alacrity, quickness, only some in that category are going to end up being in the category of Niskarim. Okay? Now remember, we never know how big this category of Niskarim is. It could really be as big as uh, it could fit inside. The, uh, you know, there, could, there could be no nis Niskarim as a reason. But that doesn't interest us. We just have to know what's Mukrach. What's Mukrach is the following. When we say Yesh Zarez Shin Niskar, the Diuk is Yesh Zarez Ve'eno Niskar. And that's called the Hefer, because we keep the same subject and predicate, we just change the Zera. So the, the Yesh always comes to tell us not all. Okay, so therefore some of them are, some in the box, some in the category of Zerizis and fall into the category of Niskarim, but some of them don't. Let's look together to the Yukim. The Yudiyakimen, the Yudiyakimen, Ye She'eno Niskar Abu But it also must be true that there are those that are not merited and yet they do things with alacrity. The Nikra Chiluf Kitsasi Hefchi. We switch the subjects and predicates, but we went and and excuse me, it's still a, a Kitsasi, but here it's a Hefchi. Ye Sheino Nisfar Vuhuzars in our chart. It's right over here. These are the people who these are the Ye Zeros. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, there is the Niskar. Yes, there is the Eno Niskar. These are the reason that are not Niskarin. Yes, Eno Niskarin, the Huzaris. And there are certain ones that are not Niskarin, and, and there's Zaris. It has to be this box over here. Okay? Excuse me. You got me. Yesh ain't on Niskar. I'm sorry. Let's do that again. Let's go slowly again. Let's start. I'm sorry. Got myself confused with all the UK. The original statement is Yesh Zarez on Niskar. Okay. Here, this reason are they share the box with the Niskar. Okay. He wants to say that Yesh Zarez and they ain't on Niskar. The second box is over here. Good. These are all the reason that are not Niskar. Very good. Now he wants to say, Yesh she'eno niskar v'huzaris. There's a certain person that's not niskar, but huzaris. That's back here again, really, right? Excuse me? He's not niskar. He has to be out here. And he is a zaris, so it has to be this box again, correct? He's not a niskar. These are the blues over niskar, but he is a niskar, so he's out here. And the third diuk, we diuk mimenu, echa mina niskarim hu zaris. But it has to be that one of these niskarim has to be zaris. It has to be something in this box. It may not be all of them, but it has to be at least one. Okay? So those are all the mukrachim diuk of the. I couldn't know because the word, the word yes. It's not a it's not a word which is particular. It's they're, they're saying that there are some reason that are niskarim. So then from that you could say since there are some that reason that are niskarim, there are some reason that are that there are some there are there are those that are not reason that are niskarim. That's correct. Or that's not or is that no one of them? No, excuse me. When you say that there are that there, there are reason, there must be the not reason also. That's okay. the first 
if I say, because, you, because he's learning Dafka, remember from his first words, he means only some. He means some and not all. When I say some, and this is the difference between him and classical logic, because he's talking about proper language. He's not talking about uh, possibilities. He's talking about how you should phrase your statement. If you mean all, then you should say all. The minute you say some, you're saying not, not all. Okay? So, so the fact that you're saying yesh zarim beniskar means that there are zarim that ain't no niskar over here, you see? Right, okay. And then there are, so the next one I'm going to get yesh ain't niskar who zar is. Because he's saying there are some zrizim that are, that, that are niskarim. No, no, yesh ain't no niskarim. No, 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 no. Get leg, get number two straight. It's a little tricky. There are right, certain ano niskarim that are still reason. Right. So another thing, when he's saying there are reason that are niskar, he's saying there are reason that are not niskar. That's what we know. Exactly. Saying. That's another way of saying it. Right. But he wants to show you. He wants to make the predicate the subject. You're right, but wouldn't what you're saying right. because it comes out the same thing. Right. But he wants to show you that. The predicate outside there can be something outside this predicate called niskarim, which are also the reason, which is out here. It's outside the predicate, but it's still here. Right. Right. And the third one, go ahead. And there are some of the niskarim. Right. One of the niskarim has to be a zaras because otherwise the statement would not be true at all. Exactly. So it has to be at least one. Maybe it's all. Who knows? But it has to be at least one. Right. right, and there could be those that are niskar and not as others, but that we don't know whether that's true or not in the statement. That's correct. Because it's, the, the, it's not. Wait, no, wait. Say, say, say what you're saying. There could be. There, there could be niskarim that are not azaras. That's correct. That's but that's we don't know correct. that. We don't. We, we don't have any proof one way or the other from the statement. That's correct. Words, we can't say. We can't say for certain whether there's even one. That's correct. One person who's in this car is not as ours. We don't know. That's right. Right, exactly. Exactly. The statement never made any comment about that. Very, very good. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Now we're going to see the same thing happening. It's going to be exactly the same diagram, but it's it's going to be in the in the negative. The show well negative. Some are not. Okay? Here's the here's the statement now. The same exact diagram, we're just going to play it around by looking at the negative side. The call mama katsasi shola. Now we have a katsasi shola. Some are not. Okay, here's the the, the the some are not box. Here's the some are not box over here, right? These are the some right. are not. Okay, so we here we have the same three D UK. Obviously, they look the same statement. I mean, in form, the same statement, so they have to have the same view. Okay. We have to say, let's start with our original statement. Yesh kochim she'en lem pichim. So here's the box of kochim, this whole little big box. And here's the box of pigeon, the blue box, or circle, I'm sorry. And there are some, the statement says that there are some kochim out here that don't have pigeon, so they exist out here, this group out here, correct? So from here, we're going to make the same 3D Ukim, just in the opposite way. We're going to have to say, since it said some Kochim don't have pigeon, we have to say that it means that some Kochim do, because if <clears throat> it meant that all Kochim don't have pigeon, then you'd have to say it. So you have to always right. say exactly what you mean. So we can make the first D Ukim, there's no problem. Sheesh Kochim, Shehainland pigeon, this box here. You know, there must be Kochim. That do have pigeon. Very good. The next one. Yesh, yesh lahem pigeon, vahem kodshin. Okay. There's certain ones that have pigeon. You see, this is the predicate relationship. They have pigeon, and they also are kodshin. This is this box again here. Okay. Of course, I want to know what's the predicate relationship to the subject. Oops, what did I just do? My, my little thing. Let me just let me turn it on again. It's, it's very helpful to, to have this little do that here if you do presentations. <clears throat> okay. All right. 
So we said, yay, she yesh lahem pigeon. They do have pigeon. They're over here. Oops, I want to set up there. And they also have pigeon. So that's this box over here. Okay. And finally, yesh ain lahem pigeon, vehem kochen. There's certain things that don't have pigeon. Okay, and their kachim. It's the box over here. Okay, they don't have pigeon, they're outside pigeon, they've got kachim. So those are mukrach diyukin. Now, most of the time, we deal with the built in mukrach diyukin. These ones usually do not interest us. Okay, most of the time, we're dealing with the, the ones that are based on language. Like I said, avos, we probably could tell those. It's an arba office and the and it means that there's not four, there's not three, right? We said there's a short one, mother and heather, and we said, wait a minute, that 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 uh, uh, that order implies a certain meaning. Okay, so most of our work is in the is in the building book. Building book doesn't mean that it's not true. It means it has the possibility of not being true. Because the language, we could find some reason why a language is being used in an imprecise line, uh, method. That's the only thing, really. But we're really, it is mukrach in the sense that it does say what it means. It's just that we can push it away by saying that there was external reasons why the the statement was said that way. But but the, this is these basic mukrach uh, the are are in the internal mechanism of statements. So, therefore, they, 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 they don't depend upon outside information. They only depend upon the actual form of the statement itself. Okay. We probably don't spend as much time on, on these because they're indisputable and, and, and it's understood, whereas the other ones you are more easily disputable and, dis and therefore they're, they're, there's one to discussion about them. Exactly. However, the real sophisticated way of learning would be to take one of these uh, a yukin, and to bring some text that talks about it, you know what I mean, and then knock someone out based on the deal. That would be a very sophisticated method of disproving someone because people usually are are not are not sensitive to the mukrach yukin, even though once you think about them, they're, they're about a true, but but sometimes they just go by the wayside. So sometimes you may have to pull these out to uh, to to bring a proof or a disproof to somebody. Okay, but it's as you said, as far as the statements themselves, since they're part of the statements, they usually don't interest us as much as the the, lingu the linguistic type of, of uh, the UK. Okay, that's our wrap up. We've now finished the whole discussion of statements. And uh, the next time we meet, as with Hashem, we'll move on to uh, syllogisms, how we take statements and we build from them new statements. Okay, so that will be our, uh, our discussion. Again, these things have to be thought about; they have to be reviewed, and uh, uh, as they become more part of your learning experience, and you start labeling things, see how us and Claudia you could told us. So now you know that's a, a quote of building of ideal. Not that it's not true, just we could find, if we do find some other reason to not go off, we may, like I said to you, you know, you and Rep. Hoshia, when they bring the word avos, they bring things that don't have the yuk, and they have to change the definition. Okay, but as we use these things, we become more comfortable with them, become more part of our vocabulary, so we have to do more conscious learning, which is the name of the game over here. Okay.